good evening and welcome to All About Sport, live from the top of the town studios in Conley Street, Cavan, on your local channel, cavantv.com. Each week we will include a wide variety of sport from all around County Cavan and if you'd like your sport featured on the show, simply contact drumlinmedia at gmail.com. So this week I am joined by Tom Mohan, who is manager with the Irish Under-17 soccer team and also he's the development officer for County Cavan. So Tom, thank you so much for joining us on All About Sport. It's great to finally get you in on the show. Love to feature um, what's going on in soccer around Cavan. And um, it's great to have you here with us today. So tell us a little bit about your role um, you know, as development officer in County Cavan. Yeah, well, my role, <coughs> Louise, I've been in the FEI now for 10 years. And uh, for the first three or four years, I was a development officer for Monaghan Cavan, Louth and Meath. And then okay. Over the period of time, we got more development officers in, uh, in say, Monaghan, John Crudden came into Monaghan, uh, Mick Neville came into Louth, and Mark Scanlon came into Meath, which yeah, freed me up then to do one county. So that's how I've ended up in Cavan. You've come across and the border and, and, and yeah, come I to am, Cavan. Yeah, I am a well, You know there's talent so. here, is it? <laughs> yeah, so I'm in Cavan now, and uh, I've basically carried out the same programs that we were rolling out uh, in, in the northeast and throughout the country. And probably over the last number of years, we've even had more programs to roll out. And uh, anything from uh, Football for All, which is disabled groups, uh, to emerging talent programs, to international level, uh, girls soccer, um, primary schools. Uh, so there's a vast array of, of programs that we do deliver and coach education also, which is a brilliant. So you really have a really f uh, a full on program it's, it's running. A, so there's yeah. lots happening and, and that's where I first came across you was obviously um in the schools and really going around and getting into the schools and, and getting you know starting young really getting the the talent out there yeah that's true like you know I know uh, in some of the schools <coughs> we ran intercultural programs and that's how we we happened to be going into St Clair's at the time yeah. uh, it was you know uh, a big majority of kids were, were in the culture background and um, so it, it was great like you know and it's i suppose from a football perspective we like to get everybody involved you know mm -hmm. and uh, football is such a, a popular game throughout the world and kids see it on tv so it's just you're giving kids an opportunity like you know and that's that's a thing like whether no matter of their abilities and thankfully in in, in cabin over the last couple of years we've had great success with uh, our underage teams with the development of clubs and also with some of our players going across water Wonderful. And um, you will talk, tell us a little bit more about them later on. So as um, we stand with Cavan Monaghan Underage League, um, tell us a bit more about um, that league and what's happening with it. Well, the, initially in 2000, in the year 2000, the Cavan Underage League was formed, which uh, a man <coughs> called Gene Cullivan, who would be well known to everybody. And, and I think we had Gene on the show yeah, before with the, yeah, the yeah, Umbro uh, Cup winners. So Jean would be a well-known figure in, in, in football circles around Cavan and the North East area. So, and Sean McCaffrey was a development officer in the North East before I came in to, to take over Sean's role. And um, those two men, along with a lot of other people, um, had great vision and, and, and foresight to, to get soccer started in Cavan. And they got a number of clubs up and running, had a seven-a-side league, and that ex expanded into a 11-a-side league. Uh, we got uh, league squads together, which are now known as our Emerging Talent League squads. And in the last couple of years, because there has been a lot of Monaghan clubs coming into the Cavan League, they changed the name of the league uh, two years ago to the Cavan Monaghan Underage League, okay. which is now expanded. You're feeding out of the two counties. The, the two counties, like yeah. you know, and similar backgrounds, and uh, you know, there's been great relationship building between between both counties and mm -hmm. uh, some fantastic people uh, developing the game and. You know, I'm fortunate to be in a job in football that that is a paid job, but yeah. my Something job you would love because be, you, you are you've played football yourself. I have, Tell us a little bit yeah. about your own background in 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 football and who um, you've played with. Well, I started off playing with a club in Monaghan called Oriel Celtic, uh, which uh, Sean McCaffrey was the manager of, and Sean was uh, <coughs> on to be the underage international manager yeah. too. So I played there for about three years. I played also with Listen Ski Rovers in in Fermanagh. Uh, I played for the Northern Ireland under fifteens. Um, so, I've from my own background, like you know, I know I probably come into soccer fairly late. Uh, you know, probably fourteen, fifteen, and I know the importance of young players getting that early opportunity. So then I advanced on. I played for Portadown. Uh, I moved from Portadown to um, Omotown, and I spent a season at Omotown. Uh, was three years at Derry City, 
I spent seven years at Finn Harps and oh, in last club was long for time, but I was injured, I was finished and oh, I was ready right. for it. So I you only spent I only, do, I only done a pre season at Long for Town yeah. and that was game over. So um I so I enjoyed kids, my career, I enjoyed football. I, yeah. I really, really have to say. You've had a great know, career and you, you know, know, these kids are really getting somebody who knows their stuff and knows really what it's yeah. about. Yeah. And as you said, it's it's you said you started late yourself. So yeah. it's really important that they're starting young and that you Absolutely. you know and these whole um you know uh, programs that you are developing is vital really to kind of improve um yeah. football and soccer in 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 Cavan. Yeah, well, that's the, the most important thing is opportunity. Yeah, we, you know we've got to do our best for opportunities. We were saying earlier, like you know the volunteers that are out in the ground, like you know, and I say like you know I'm in a job grand and it's you know it's it's in football and it's brilliant, but. My job would be impossible. Development officers' jobs would be impossible yeah. without the the fantastic work of the volunteers yeah. and their, their love for the game, their passion for it. Um, we we'll disagree, you know. Yeah. We're 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 full of emotion in football, and we we'll have disagreements. But at the end of the day, everybody's in it for you know to develop the game and, and yeah. uh, give give kids an opportunity. You've a lot of great um people that you work alongside. We've Jason. I have to give him a shout out to Jason. Yeah. there in the back Hi, Jason. <laughs> Feeling under the weather, didn't want to join us, but yeah. he'll be. We'll have him on again. Um, um, in in another few weeks, um, he'll be joining us. But yeah. you know, Jason's also his role at the moment. Um, and a lot of the the children probably in Cavan would be familiar with his face as well. What's yeah. Jason's taken over from you for you at the moment with the development officer? Yeah. Um. Position. Yeah, Jason's now on a job bridge scheme uh, with with the FEI, and um, he's got he's got a great knowledge of of, yeah. of the job because he's done a lot of stuff w- with her sales and you know over the last number of years, yeah. and he's he's from schools programs right through to as I mentioned earlier with football for all uh, soccer sisters programs. What Emerging is the soccer Talent. sisters program? Soccer Sisters is we, we run a, it's basically like a camp at Easter we run a four day yeah. camp uh, for for the for the girls uh, basically it's eight, eight to fourteen and we bring girls in as young as you know yeah. six and seven like so you know the girls are like really eager they are yeah and there's some really talented girls out there and, and once again it's 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 providing an opportunity like you know yeah. and it's it's so important now you know that girls get that opportunity and uh, it's seen from a national level like you know that. Um, to, to give girls that chance to yeah. play football. Tell us a little bit more about the Emerging Talent Programme. Um, our Emerging Talent Programme, we initially started with development squads and that would have been in the early years of, <coughs> of the, the Cavan Underage League um, where it was, I think it was 2004 we got our first, first squad up and going and uh, we went to the Kennedy Cup which is a national competition where the 32 leagues take part in. So. Uh, Brian Smith and Martin Kernan at the time were, were, were two fellas were heavily involved in the league and myself so we, we got squads together there was also a man called Tom Bourne uh, there was two other gentlemen from Valley James Duff uh, Francis Little was one of them and uh, I think it was I can't mm-hmm. just remember the last <laughs> Michael Little I think it was so we got it go up and running and it eventually formed into emerging talent um, which has got stronger and stronger each year, like you know, and, and, and our squads have, have really developed well. So it's basically getting the best young players from the league league squad from the clubs, uh, getting trials run for them to get into the league squad, uh, and then we, we might start with a squad of from twenty five to thirty players, and then mm. we'd whittle it down. Then when it comes nearer the competition, to mm. to to get them to the competition. So it is it has worked really well, and then. Uh, Brian Smith and uh, Trish O'Dea. Brian was our coordinator for our first Emerging Talent group and then that went on, Chris McBride take, took over then and um, now Martin Kernan is, is the coordinator at present. Right, okay, so it's, um, as you said, there's a lot of players that have, you know, you've started and have now kind of progressed and gone across the water yeah. and are playing with big clubs um, over in the UK. Tell us a little bit about some of the names that we, you know, that we should be l- listening out for and, and becoming familiar yeah. with. Well. Jonathan Letty and Ryan O'Reilly, uh, the two they were the f- the first two lads from Emerging Talent Program to go across the water. Uh, they played for the Irish under 15s, 16s, and 17s. Um, Jonathan is now <coughs> at Ipswich Town. Um, he's into his third season at Ipswich Town. So Roy Keane was the man that signed wow. Jonathan. So yeah. that's it. when you when that's you please when you please Roy Keane, I've, you have something about you. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he's hard man to please. Yeah. And uh, Ryan O'Reilly, Ryan's at Stoke. And uh, Ryan's into his second year at Stoke. He's got a stress fracture in his lower back at the moment, so okay. uh, he's had a tough. It's been tough for him, but he's done remarkably well. Also, when he was 
he was in the top three for under seventeen player of the year last season at the RTE Awards last Who's week. Who's that? That was Ra- Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah. Where is he from? Uh, he's from Bally James. Bally James yeah. stuff. Yes, uh, definitely. So, him before, um, yeah. He's and then we've uh, Colin McCabe. Colin is currently signed with Celtic uh, as a goalkeeper. He's only turned sixteen there recently, yeah. and he's a young lad. He's about six foot four, six foot five. Oh. So he's got all the the credentials to be a very good young goalkeeper, and he's done done uh, remarkably well. Um, and young lad called Jake Doyle. He is uh, yeah. Jake is from Bally Jim stuff also, and Jake's only turned fourteen. But there's a lot of clubs interested in Jake at the moment, and he's been over at. Uh, Chelsea, he's been at Manchester United, Aston Villa, Everton on trial. So Gosh. he's a, he's a sought after young man. It's really you know, exciting times for all these young players. A young lad called Danny Cullivan also. Danny has has been over at Aberdeen on on trial as well. Uh, so he's doing doing very well. And we've also had a, a young lad from Cavan Shamrock, Dara Kennedy. Who Dara has been? Uh, Dara Kennedy, I know. I know Dara Kennedy. I think in, I was, once told him. He was him, on yeah. trial with with uh, Rangers at Christmas. They had a they had a group wow. of Irish players playing up in uh, in Dublin at the game. So there's a lot of interest in the young players. So That's it's going well. It's but remarkable. We can, we can, and they're all just from like you know have come out of the these uh, from this area yeah, from the, the Cavanaugh area from out of the Cavanaugh area and then wow. the, before that you know in, if you talk even in Monaghan like you know you Jonathan Douglas from Clonus who's, mm-hmm. who's went on and had a fantastic career he's playing with Brantford at the moment he's been an Irish senior international young Mark Connolly's with Crawley Town at the moment uh, Killian Sheridan here from, from Cavan yes, yeah. Killian's currently playing with Kilmarnock had a spell with Celtic yeah. um, and uh, there is there's fantastic talent about it yeah. as I say it's given the boys a chance and, Thankfully, they're, they're brilliant. It and, and it must be great for you. You've obviously, you know, you've said you've been involved for the last 10 years. So you've probably watched their growth and, and watched how it's really, yeah. um, how these players have, you know, progressed over the years. And uh, It's been great. Like, you yeah. know, they're, they're all good lads, like, you know, and they yeah. come from good backgrounds, you know, and as I say to players, you know, any team they go out onto pitch, you know, they're representing their family, their club, like, you yeah. know, and they're the people that probably have done the most with them. You know, yeah. fair enough, like, we'll take credit and that, but, you know, as I say, the first kit, the first coaches, and the most important coaches yeah. kids will have is their is their parents. Yes. You know, and um, then the, their club as well. You know, so they, they they have to go through their club before they come into us. So yeah. and and the clubs have done remarkably well yeah. um, in developing these young players. You know, providing facilities for them, providing football yeah. for them, and uh, that's where it starts. And we bring it on from yeah. there. Like. You know, just ha- like knowing yourself, Tom and Jason, and, and you know, you're you're great with the kids. I've seen you in action with the children, and you know, they're really, really um, you've done an amazing work with them over the years, and and it's lovely they have lovely role models like that to look up to and to kind of guide them on on their way. Like, I mean, you're giving them a really good start, and I suppose that's important that they get a good start. You're very level headed and calm as well. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> that you always helps. You've, you've, you've never Patience. you've never seen me <laughs> you're in the dugout. <laughs> Um, we're, we've got um, some videos to show. Um, you know, really, you, you've taken on a new role in the last um, in the last year. Um, manager now with the Irish under seventeen. So that must have been you know you must have been delighted to 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 get this uh, new role. Yeah, it's 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 Brilliant. definitely it's 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 a great challenge for me. Like, yeah. you know, and it's um, it's Is it something you've it's, always it's, wanted to kind of was that kind of where you were aiming to kind of get to that level, or how did that well, come about? I think you know it's probably always more. I see myself more as a coach, like you know, um, and going out and developing young players, like you know, and and, and improving them, and <coughs> like basically, uh, Sean McCaffrey took me in as a coach with his under seven under seventeens back in um, it was two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, and that group actually qualified for the finals of Europeans. So that was a great experience for me to be in at that level, actually coaching. Uh, Joe Boyle was his assistant manager, and knew Joe from the Finn Harps days, like you know, and um, it was a great great experience, like yeah. you know, and then. Uh, I was in for the following two years with Sean and then John Morling took over then as manager yeah. and uh, John kept me on as a coach so at uh, two years with John also and then John moved on to Brighton so I was asked this season would it take uh, yeah. last year's under 16s through as this year's under 17s so I said I said I would like you know and so far it's worked out well I know the players from last year like you know and they're a good group of players yeah. and I'm fortunate like that we have good quality in the group you know yeah. At the end of the day, you know, if you, if you want to do well, you have to have good players, yeah. and and I have to say they're a good bunch on the pitch and off the pitch, you know. Yeah. So so far so good, but 
You'd have uh, a fucking I know, you'd, you'd, never you'd never get carried away on this oh, game. We'll talk, a <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about it when we come back. We're going to have a little look at this um, video here. So this is Ireland playing um, That's Ma Macedonia, Macedonia out in the, in the, uh, the qualifier from the Europeans. Okay. And this was actually in Macedonia, so it was, wasn't the best. It was like 30, over 30 <laughs> degrees heat and it was... Sweden in the first game, in a very tight encounter, like, um, we came into this game, it was 30 degrees heat, the pitch wasn't the oh best, gosh, like, you know, yeah. so, um, but we, we were then at half-time 2-0 up, uh, the boys had played very, very well, and we should have been out of sight at half-time, yeah. and it was always, we were always cautious, if they get a goal, they're back in, if the tails were up, like, you know, and you, you never know what's going to happen then, like, but uh, we were dominant from the start to finish, bar maybe a 10-minute period after they, they scored a pound, I think 2-1 early in the second half, but we regrouped again, played some good stuff, created yeah. opportunities and we scored a four or two goals which proved vital uh, at the end of the group because it left us then that we, we, we talked about yeah. uh, actually we made identical goals up in Sweden. So we're joint top. So it did really well. Um, the weather, did it affect them? Like the heat must, is a big factor, isn't it? When you're not used to that kind of playing, that kind of heat. It is a massive factor. Like, you know, when it's a massive factor too in your, in your preparation for the games, you know, we, we try to mirror everything as close to to the game time, like you know, so we would have trained the previous day at the same time, and to get the boys used to that that sort of heat, and um, it can do. And even you know your tactics, you have to be aware of how you're going to set your team out, okay. because if you start to press high up the pitch, and you, you know you you got to conserve energy at different stages during the game. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ireland played Macedonia. Yeah. Um, this is obviously a very uh, <laughs> joyful moment for the guys. We're celebrating anyway. They're delighted. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was, as I say, we dominated the game. And yeah. 
we need it to prove at the end that in groups it can come down to the level which is quite yeah. So they're under 17s, have they, have they played, does it start under 15s or where would a lot of them yeah, guys have started? Our, our international started under 15 level. Under uh, 15 and would most of them players have started under 15? The, the vast majority of them would have started under 15 and Niall, Niall Harrison from Sligo was our under 15 manager and um, they would have moved on to John Morling to under 16 level. Yeah. And uh, then John would have been under 16 and under 17 manager. So yeah. as I say, I stepped in this year to take the yeah. 17s. And uh, there's been a lot of work that's been put in over the yeah. days, you know. You have a lot of travelling involved as well. You just And you have a lot more games coming up. Tell us a bit about kind of the travel side of things and what games are coming up and, you know, um, what they hope to achieve this year. The, the, come here, the travel's never easy. When you have too much travel, yeah. it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a nightmare. But it's part and parcel of the job. Yeah. Like, you know, and sometimes you have to go around and look at it's players. It's not as glamorous as it all sounds, really, is it? Not, like, you know, it's like, you know, um, it's, I suppose it's just part and parcel when you have to take yeah. it. Like, you know, uh, sometimes you have to go and look at the opposition. Yes. Um, but uh, some of my backroom staff too, like Mick Neville, who's a former League of Ireland, great. Mick is, he's played for Derry City, he played for Shamrock Rovers. He's the most decorated player in League of Ireland history. So... Uh, and Mick would have been a defender, so he, he's, he's brilliant to have on board. Mm. Like, you know, when Mick goes and watches games, uh, Colin O'Brien, Colin's a former League of Ireland player with Cork City and has won many honours. Uh, Colin will go and watch teams and uh, maybe the opposition when we're out there. Colin will go and watch opposition right. to report on them. Yeah. Uh, Darren O'Neill's a goalkeeping coach. So I have a lot of people doing work, you know, for yeah. me and going to, going to watch players. And you always get feedback from players anyway. People yeah. are going to push their own players. Like, yeah, you know, absolutely, and, you know, yeah. Come here. Uh, the important thing is we see as many as we can. Yeah. You know. Uh, so, but the, the travelling. It's grand when you get to yeah. a destination. I know, I know if it's sunny, exactly, especially with the weather we're yeah. having. Um, so you're saying you're coming up to, um, they've got their next game in Austria. That's coming up now in April, is it? It's the... Or end, March, end of March. March. Yeah, um, we get together on the 20th of March and we'll have three days training in, in Dundalk with the, with, the, with the group. We'll train at Bill Oregon Football Club uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go to Austria then and we'll play our first game on the 25th uh, against Austria. Our second game will be against Georgia on the twenty seventh, and our mm-hmm. final game will be on the thirtieth against Serbia. So, but before we go to that, we we play Croatia in a double header friendly in Croatia. Yeah. At uh, it's the end of end of February. What sort of training do these um, players have to go through, and commitment do they have to make? I mean, is a lot of these boys in school, or you know, are they at this full time? Yeah, it's, it's it a bit more juggling match. Some of them, the vast majority of them, are over in England with full time clubs. Okay. Some of them are still at home playing part time football. Okay, so and it's very hard school. to merge. So too. it is like you know, and um, it, it can be difficult. So it's a case the boys that are at home, uh, they've got it. We've got to get them into a program. They're on our emerging talent regional uh, squad on a Monday night. Some of them are playing League of Ireland under nineteen. Yeah. Playing with the club. So uh, after we come back from Macedonia, our home based players, uh, our physio done a, a strength and conditioning program out for them all. So just to, to bring them up to speed and make sure that. You know, that when we come back and meet up again, that they're in as good of fitness condition as close as possible to, to the boys that are in the full time setups. Yeah. You know. All right. Okay. So, and as you're saying, a lot of them are, are in the in the UK. So it's it's to get them all together to train that's before it. the games. That's hard to get them train as a team. It you is, know, because yeah. it's wanting them all training separately, but bringing um, them together. But I suppose if these boys have talent, so when they come together, they're able to really yeah, you know, perform and well, do what they have to do at Christmas. Uh, I'd hoped to take all our players in, but I needed to see more players. So I, I took uh, basically a group of players in on trial at Christmas, and I've got five or six from that group to add to my own group. You know, which yeah. will bring up a twenty-two man squad to go to go to Croatia, and um, then you just got to work with them as as best you can and look at the areas of the game that 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 we need to improve on. You got to do that yeah. little bit extra, not forgetting that. The yeah. stuff that they're good at, we got to top up on that yeah. too. You know? How many players, roughly, would you have say starting off at the very underage level? You know, you know, and how many would progress to this stage? You know, what numbers are you talking? Well, you're talking at the under fifteen age group, which which I feel probably is it's the most difficult for player identification because there's so many, yeah. and uh, that's an important age group because you're starting to, it's the early stage of identification for the national football, yeah. and um, Niall Harrison has has a lot of work to do on that, like you know and. It's mm-hmm. it's great that you have the under fifteen. Kind of separate cream from the well, you can you can start to identify mm-hmm. the really top players then, and but they'll always come players through later on. You know that's why I ran I ran for the trials at Christmas, because players will you know there could be periods where they'll they'll not be performing well, and the next thing they start to maybe get faster, stronger, get more confidence. 
uh, get technically better, they work harder in their game. A lot of young players, a lot of the great players have, have progressed to a high level because of disappointments that have come through. Yeah. And, and they've said, well, I've got to work more, I've got to yeah. work harder. And they become better players through, yeah. through having been disappointed. Like. Oh, very good. Um, we better move on, I suppose, with the big news, really, that for Cavan is the, the gathering tournament that's coming up and um, the Celtic game that's um, going to be taking place here in Cavan in, in April. Tell us a bit about that, Tom. We're very excited yeah. about that coming. Um, great news. It, it is great, like, you know, that a, a club like uh, Glasgow Celtic are going to be coming to Cavan. You know, it's, a, it's going to be an historic uh, couple of days. And um, because every year over the last, uh, I think it's four or five years, uh, our Kennedy Cup squad has always went to England, whether it's before the competition or after it. So our, our Kennedy Cup squad, the lads born in 1995, they went to Blackburn. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the 1996 group went to Sheffield United. The 1997 group went over to Celtic. Uh, the 1998 group last year, uh, pre-Kennedy Cup in preparation, uh, they played Sunderland, they played Celtic and they played Rangers. So okay. every year we've we've had squads gone over and, and all the squads have done very, very well, like, yeah. you know, and this year, due to the gathering, yeah. uh, and the league felt it as a great opportunity to, to maybe bring some club over, you know, and especially Celtic with their, with their Irish connections, it was, it was ideal and, and, and thankfully people at Celtic have been very good and, they're, they're prepared yeah. to come over so on the 2nd and 3rd of April um, 2nd and 3rd see, of April so where yeah. if, if anyone like wants to go and check out these games and, and see this talent that you have up and coming where can we catch the games um, the games will be in Coutel on mm-hmm. the 2nd on the 2nd of April uh, on a Tuesday evening uh, there'll be double headers uh, mm-hmm. the DDSL will play Armagh City mm-hmm. and at 6 o'clock and then at 8 o'clock uh, Glasgow Celtic will play the Cavan Mall and Underage League at oh, 8 o'clock gosh. and then the following morning um, there'll be games at the Cavan Astro Park and mm-hmm. at Coutil as well yeah. and then it'll finish at Ballygym Stuff where um, it's the Cavan Mall and Underage League will play Armagh City in the first yeah. game and then in the second game uh, Celtic will play the DDSL so Brilliant. six games in the space oh, of 36 busy. hours yeah, so it'll be really really busy and, and Calvin TV All About Sport will we'll be covering um, yeah. some of them games definitely and yeah. definitely get down to these games and you can um, check out any further details on the I suppose the Calvin Monaghan on Rage League website yeah absolutely all the yeah. details and will be there and if, wants it, to yeah, get down you never know you might meet a new up and coming um, uh, star so it is a good yeah. chance to, to get down there I'm sure there'll be um, a lot of people very interested in that tell us just a little bit before we finish up Tom about um, you know different uh, contributors um, that you'd like to thank well obviously the 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 league itself you know um, as I say and I keep going back like, you know without the volunteers without the people putting <coughs> their, their heart and soul into the development of the game uh, kids wouldn't be getting the opportunity and uh, everybody on the in the Calvin Mullen Underage League and indeed everybody that has worked in the Calvin Mullen Underage League from its inception in two thousand yeah. to to this current day, um they've they've been phenomenal yeah. and uh, put put great work in so only for them, like you know, Brilliant. and yeah. all the coaches that are out there keep yeah. getting for your education and the better educated we have our coaches and uh, the better our players are going yeah. to be. And so that's great. Keep, keep uh, Tom watching. Moen, um, manager of the Irish Under 17s team, thank you so much for joining us. And I mean, if anyone wants to get more details, again, you can contact us here at Drumlin um, um, Media at gmail.com for more details or also on the um, Cavan Mona Andridge League website. Um, we're really delighted to have you in here yes. and to shed some light on what's going on um, with um, the football here in Cavan. And also, good luck with the, the tournament in April. We will be covering that. And um and good luck then with the under seventeens. I hope it goes well for you. But thanks very much, Tom. You're very good. So that's it from All About Sport for this week. I will be back again next Wednesday evening at the same time. Um, Each week we will include a wide variety of sports. So again, if you want your sport featured, just contact us on drumlinmedia at gmail.com or leave us a little message on our Facebook page. So until next week, it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly.